Huh. Watching Kyle's unboxing videos again? Yeah, he always finds the coolest... No way! A robot dog? Gotta ask where he got it. Or use your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Just draw a circle around the dog on your screen, and it shows you where to buy it right in the app. Oh, I just learned a new trick. And that for once, I beat Kyle to the next big thing. Circle it, find it, with the new Galaxy S24 Ultra, and circle the search with Google. Get yours now at Samsung.com. Internet connection required. Results may vary based on visuals. Welcome to the Bare Naked ABCs, where we discuss every song from Y to seven. Oh, wait, wait. No, I'm I sorry. You got Never that mind. backwards, my, Tracy. Yeah, my my spreadsheet is upside down. Oh, uh, yes, yeah. yes. Um, oh. this week uh, I have joining me <laughs> Heidi, Aaron, and Betsy to talk Hello, about this week's song. Hello, everybody. Hey. I'm not surprised it's come to this. <laughs> Tracy being all upside down. <laughs> Oh wait! Didn't we all say we we're going to turn our cameras? Uh, that's yeah. true. That's true. How do we? How do we do this? I'm I'm too old you, for you this. You gotta go. Yeah. Let's, and round and round. Let's not do that. We're going to have a hard enough time talking to each other. I can other. do. I can do this. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, it'll take me a long time to do it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and this week we have two guests from two different worlds. Guys, my world has just been turned upside down. This Ooh. never happens. Um, we have Noah back with us. Welcome. Yay! Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> my dreams were my ticket out. <laughs> <laughs> and also joining us without his partner in crime, he's missing the bastard of the family tree, is JD from Radical Face hey. R Us. <laughs> Hello. We but we did BNL last week. So now I know. Now, yeah, we're we're all over the place. All, all kinds of bare naked ABC's references during that episode. <laughs> I mean, that's why I was just shaking my head because I, I remember saying something about you. I made some joke and I said, I've been hanging out with Tracy too much. <laughs> it's a <some> song joke. <laughs> so this week we are going to be talking about the song Upside Down. If you have never heard it before, here is a quick snippet. Come to the Sooner or later there must be another's kiss. Behind that kiss, the promise of a life of bliss. Yeah, great, I won't be taking the bait. I'd rather drown, and I will not take my whole life upside down. So, Aaron, this is a Paige Robertson song. Yes. But my question very clearly is what what album? All right. So the strings in the intro is sort of conjure up latter day Beatles. Um it's got like that wall of sound production we were talking about. Um so you know I think we can safely limit it obviously to like phase one BNL, but I'm thinking well last half of phase one BNL, so probably post two thousand. I said last time I keep forgetting everything to everyone. That was the last week, right? That was uh unfinished. That that is what you said, yeah. I, I but I, I guessed wrong. I said I think I said that was Bare Naked Ladies Are Men or something yes. like that. Okay. Now it seems unlikely to be the same album twice in a row, but that's a logical fallacy. And this song has that same kind of poppy slick production quality. So I'm going out on a limb and guessing everything to everyone. Again? You are correct. Ah, sweet. Okay. <laughs> Has that happened before, other than the Canadian Snack Time trilogy, where we had no songs from the same album back to back? That's how you pronounce that. <laughs> yeah, trilogy. Snack time, snack time, and a yeah. time. But it's what am I trilogy. pronouncing? Here? Trilogy. trilogy. Oh, oh, oh yeah. it's like a trilobite. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, I think it was Ty that pronounced it weird. It's trilogy. He was trilogy. Somebody. The trilogy <laughs> snack time. Trilogy. Um, it's pronounced trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a, like a week to figure out that he was saying Ed, Ed Shaughnessy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shag Hennessy. Yeah. So we, so we're talking about upside down. You got the album absolutely mm. correct. It is Excellent. in the exact middle of this album. It's actually the if you had an 
album of this, a record, a vinyl of this, then it would be the first song on on B side. That's obviously not where most people have heard it, so it's right in the center of this album at number eight. But it would be a killer track one, like for I could be, you could definitely open it yeah. up with this. It's uh, worthy of yeah. it's worthy of that. I agree. So it reminds me a lot of Hello out of the Gate. <laughs> A little bit. I could hear yep. that. There are other things it reminds me more of, but I can hear that definitely. Well, I mean, and just with that, like starting the album with the like some mm. kind of orchestral thing, and then boom, right into the into the poppiness. It almost reminded me of the opening of Lasagna. <laughs> okay, well, so the <laughs> sure, the accordion, sure, yeah, the accordion reminds. Well, he does me of that a whole accordion intro, yeah. and you're yeah. like, well, oh, basically, I mean, Hello City. The opening was. You know the Cregan brothers showing off. Yeah, <laughs> that's, really, that's pretty much what this is. And yeah. what was on well, I was gonna say, props to Jim and Tyler who are just in a complete groove lock the entire time and holding yeah. it down in the pocket. Like, wow, Absolutely. it's so tasty. Doing a great job. Rhythm section, <laughs> shout out. Uh, but yeah, like the accordion uh, first reminded me. I mean, of course, they might be giants. Uh, so someone reset the counter. Zero episodes without <laughs> TMBG. Um, but then I thought more about it and it actually, it kind of reminds me more of like klezmer music, like Jewish folk music. Mm, yeah. I know that Stephen Page is culturally Jewish, but I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it really reminded me of um, one of my favorite albums of all time, which is California by Mr. Bungle, where they like mix in this kind of klezmer music with like death metal and like jazz and it's all over the place and like Beach Boys kind of harmonies, pop vocals. It's an amazing album, and it reminds me of this, especially the intro of this song called Ars Moriendi, which I think I sent the link to Tracy. So they have this kind of klezmer accordion intro. It's a little darker, a little more weird, but it's, it's if kind of... If you have not heard that, here is a snippet of that. <laughs> So if you're wondering what what kind of stuff I listen to, <laughs> but well, I thought yeah. that was a really good reference too because then you get the after after the intro you get that that uh, surfer yeah. uh, guitar yeah. coming in. It's that that whole album is brilliant, but but yeah, Did it's definitely an acquired taste. The uh, the horribly offensive uh, bare naked uh, TV show where they play one week <laughs> on the traditional. <laughs> Uh, Chinese instruments in the restaurant. I have not. Yes. Is that? Yeah. I, I think that's like reminded me of it. Of, it. of is there... the, it, the, No, there was only one. Okay. There was then only it's a that one. Yes. Yeah. There's yes, that the... one. Yeah. Oh, uh, gosh. That... I'm, I'm definitely fascinated now. I got to check. <laughs> yeah. this out. I mean, it was. It, oh, that's right. You missed that episode, Aaron. It was tongue in cheek. You know, because it's fair naked lazy. It is just not like. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was oh, it's so funny, really tongue in cheek. Yes, obviously. But well, yeah, yeah, still, yeah. Uh, but that that reminded me, you know, quite a bit of like <laughs> trying trying to play pop music on you know traditional instruments of any kind. It's like you know, it sounds very similar to that. <laughs> Interesting. That yeah, I got to check that out. Definitely, I it's, will. I will send it to you. Um, it's so because wild. there's an extended version that's not on the internet that I have that I have oh, gotten wow. from the really um, wow from the person who made the video. I, you'll, you'll have to send that around. To yeah, that's a, that's, that's a <laughs> group message you're sending out. Yeah, <laughs> please, please. Mm-hmm. Did anyone else here think of Eleanor Rigby in the very beginning of this song? Oh, maybe a little. bit. I can hear it. Yeah. Yeah. As you say that, it, it makes sense. Yeah. No. Uh, this <laughs> no, is the, Betsy's. This is the, the track uh, that, uh, that Jim was really excited to score and then get the 
I can just totally see that. And, um, oh man, I remember like I was following the like the production, you know, diaries or podcasts or whatever it is, pretty cl- pretty closely on this album, and it was like he was really jazzed to have like actually you know like have my string friends come in and you know like uh play on the song it, it, this whole song is just it's my favorite on that whole album oh you can we tell they do. had a lot of fun making we this definitely one, yeah. should bring yeah. up the the string friends that were in this oh, so please. we have matt yeah. sunis on viola we have larry corbett on cello we have joel druin and charlie bissert on violin and suzy katayama as the strings contractor and then Robert Tiny Menegioni is on the tambourine. Who just and retired. I was just going <laughs> to say. Just retired after 30 years donuts. as a drum tech. So, Aaron, there's an opening Glad as a drum tech for the band. He was uh-huh. such a cool dude, though. He would I, used to yeah. come out after shows and be like, they're coming <laughs> out. Give us like 10 minutes. Like, he was so cool with the people waiting back in the day when you could do that. Yeah. Um, when you were waiting after a show. And Tiny was the first person usually that came out and was like, they're, they're That's coming. Cool. And, like, even, got the, I've got the lab coat. So if anyone. Even a couple like, of years ago, like, Tyler was still <laughs> like singing, like, bar, bar, barbecue donuts. Like, <laughs> for, you know, from whatever tour that was. Uh, <laughs> Tiny is great. And he played Santa, I think, too, didn't he? And cool. Coming down like, from the... Costumes and, oh, yeah. Yeah. He would do whatever they asked of him. Like, when they and had the Q&A, like... he would run out into the audience with the microphone. Like He almost became, like, a sixth member of the band, like, on stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He was Absolutely. in every yeah. show, like, playing different percussion stuff. He was, like, the fifth Beatle, except the sixth <laughs> bare naked was... lady. Yeah, he was the sixth <laughs> bare naked lady. Seventh. Well, seven. Well, if you want seven. to split hair, get technical. I mean, if you want to count Chris Brown, uh, I, I, I refuse to cut out Andy. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Andy, Andy deserves. But I mean, are we going to include yeah. Chris Brown? Are we going to include Greg Kirsten? Like, I, I mean, they, all they were about like, oh, Stephen oh, Duffy. Okay. Yeah. Now we're doing it. Now we're getting Matt it. Page. Like, this is the cool thing about this band and what I've loved having been a part of this podcast for years now, just discovering more of their music is all the different musical connections and all the references and all the like weird little temporary alliances and guests and stuff like that. Like it's such it's, it's comparing it to like, it'd be like, a, like an ensemble cast TV show or movie or something, you know, like there, there are standout moments, but like there's so many wonderful people just contributing to this and, and so much talent, you know, and, and it really shows in a song like this. Yeah. Most definitely. I wonder if I liked it. <laughs> Let, let's talk about the music. Let's break this music down because I have a whole bunch of music hey. notes this week. Well, let's break it down. Whoops. <laughs> Go right ahead, Aaron, because my dogs are like. Just All right. Yeah, yeah. You let me know if you disagree or you want to take a moment to break something. Uh, I got you. Dive deeper. Thanks, Heidi. So, uh, Upside Down was recorded at about 136.5 beats per minute, is where <laughs> I landed. Uh, they kind of like doing that. I've I've kind of discovered is that most more often than not, when you know in the older days they wouldn't use a click track or a metronome, and in the kind of the latter days they tend to kind of go. 0.5 a lot. They, I don't know, they just really like to dial it in very, very precisely, which is kind this of is, interesting. This is going to be his way of Tyler's way of like, you know what? I'm going to really mess with that guy who told me that I absolutely had to do Ben, ben Mink. Well, like, I, I, you know what? He made so, me use a click track. I'm going to go to the half mark. I'm, I'm every thinking time. about <laughs> either like mechanical metronomes, like really old school ones, or like I had an early digital one that was, it wasn't even, it was like every three BPM. Like you couldn't even set it to like, you know, exactly 161 or whatever. It'd be like 164. So like that would drive people crazy. It, it wasn't Ben Mink's fault. M- maybe you should drive was rough on everybody. <laughs> 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 but uh i i have landed on calling this song in the key of c sharp minor which is the relative key uh the relative minor of e major which you might also argue the song is in uh, certainly for certain sections of the song and it, and it does end it lands very decisively on e major but i i still think that for the most part it kind of plays around in c sharp minor um yeah, so you start off with this intro, which is these kind of Eleanor Rigby types, very kind of serious and, and austere sounding strings, very dramatic. 
Um, and this is this lovely descending line, C sharp minor to B major to A major. And then we head up to G sharp major, which is the perfect turnaround back to the tonic C sharp minor for the first. And uh, yeah, Heidi's giving me thumbs up. So well, and as good. we know, why is you the concur. A major in Let's a minor scale? Oh yeah, well yeah. So again, there, <laughs> there's uh yeah there there's a little bit of there's either borrowed chords or you know again they're kind of playing around with the relative major and minor. There's there's some stuff going on here. It's not exactly, uh, uh, you know, completely by the book. It's not an Ikea song. It's very, very, uh, very, very uh, much its own kind of thing. You know, they left their mark on it. Um, but anyways, the verse is very simple. Now, I'm probably overcomplicating things, Heidi. Maybe you you tell me if you agree. I kind of split the verse up into like a verse and a pre-chorus, even though it doesn't always go into the chorus. Yeah, it's really weird because it's more like a tag chorus. It's yeah. not like, because it's just that. Could it be almost like a mini I'm chorus in down, itself? I'm gagging like, eh. bound. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> um, boy, those are both sad. <laughs> um, but uh, I bury through wishes deep in the ground. So I will, it's like a one sentence, well, two sentence, I guess. Yeah, I agree. It's like a tag. Chorus. Yeah, because they kind but of. It's more like the... verse, 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 verse. And it's weird. <laughs> yeah. and, solo epic solos yeah. oh yeah 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 well so yeah so the, the the main meat and potatoes of the verse is really just kind of bouncing back between c-sharp minor and g-sharp major um and then you get up to c-sharp minor transition into what i'm calling the free chorus or our, you know our, our b section or i guess our c section of our intro is our a section see i'm already i'm already all over the map here the free chorus would be c-sharp minor to f-sharp major a major b major e major and then the chorus which goes from, and this is like, nothing's good enough for me to shake me from uh, my complacency. Uh, the chorus is G sharp major to C sharp minor back to G sharp major a few times. And there are these really lovely keyboards here that sound kind of like maybe a combination of a Mellotron flute voice and or a calliope. It's very circusy, which I like. Um, and then we land on F sharp major. Uh, which brings us to the bridge, which is A major to E major back and forth until we step down to G sharp major, in which case it sort of blends into the choruses changes by going to C sharp major to A major to B major to E major, with E major acting much the same way as it does at the end of the pre-chorus. Only here, it sounds like we changed keys to the relative major to E major because you have this A major to B major to E major, which is very much a 4 5 one of E major, and it sounds quite lee major <laughs> it's in the key of lee major uh but yeah so the four, i love lee major for the bridge it kind of Great. steps out into the relative major they're so having some fun there but that's pretty much all the different changes and then the form itself is the intro which is kind of a modified version of the chorus changes or the, i think the pre-chorus changes um but anyways it's enough to warrant giving his own letters so we'll call it a and then you have verse one b pre-chorus c verse two b pre-chorus c chorus d nothing's good enough for me verse three b pre-chorus c bridge e and that's if the genie were set uh this is almost like beach boys kind of section in the bridge it has like those crazy high-pitched harmonies it's almost like a, a hint of ween or something it's it's weird enough, again, to kind of very, very much remind me of like uh, Mr. Bungle, at least with the California album. And then you have the guitar solo, really nice guitar solo over the verse changes, which is B, verse four proper, which is B again, pre-chorus C, and then chorus D. And they end, again, definitively on E major. So take that how you will. Uh, Heidi, do you concur? Oh! Uh -huh. Oh, you win this. I really wish you could win this. Aaron, take it a little more seriously, please. And yeah. I, I have one thing to Aaron, say, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it don't matter a hill of beans what happens to me, but the world couldn't uh... afford it if anything happened to you. A hill of beans. <laughs> you know, I always my my generation i'm an elder millennial i always think of the teenage mutant ninja turtles movie of michelangelo talking to april o'neill doing that speech in the rain but yes oh see no <laughs> i was thinking of lee majors i know screen. you were doing the 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 og and mm -hmm. lee i know someone who's been a very good boy this year oh stop that immediately <laughs> 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 anyway. Anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was a very thorough breakdown. But I have a question for for you guys, and and everyone that's here is much more musical than me, so maybe you guys can answer. Why the intro? Not that I dislike it, but why? What was? They never do anything without a purpose. What was the purpose of the intro in this song? To show off. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think Noah hit the nail on the head. I think primarily you know, this combination of like to show off and also it kind of sets this tone, right? Because it is in a minor key. And although there are lighter moments within it and they kind of like go to the relative major potentially for like the bridge, even though it's kind of bouncy and fun, it does have a minor tone to it. Um, it kind of reminds me of a tango. So I'll make one more reference for you. It reminded me very much of the cover of Roxanne by the police that was in the movie Moulin Rouge, which is the best song in that film, IMHO. It, some, somebody said previously that it reminded them of Hello City, and I think that's exactly right on. Like it's, mm. exa- it's, it, it's what they did with the beginning of Hello City. It's like this, you know, like fantastic oh, musical yeah. piece, and then it stops. And then you just go like acapella singing for a second. And then like the rest of the, you know, like. The rest I was just of the wondering if it sense. fits it. Like we can come back to it more later. But oh, oh like thematically kind of fit in thematically with the, what the song is there's, about. Potentially there's some programmatic stuff going on because this song shocker for a Stephen page song is about not being able to commit to anything. <laughs> Uh, amongst <laughs> other things so what? maybe that's kind of their joke is like they're just kind of throwing all the different musical styles out and uh just doing all this so you know, stuff yeah it could be i'm just i'm just i'm just freestyling I like here that. <laughs> I, th- I i think it's just a really like dynamic uh, almost cinematic moment because like it mm. sets up that you know like and then it like he turns you know like he's dancing and then he like turns and looks right at the camera he's like I'm not surprised, you know, like it's... yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Is there a video for this? No, no. I would love no, to there should be video for this one. There should be. There's they they have footage of it from ships and dips, and that's pretty hilarious because yeah. of the happenstance there, but <laughs> So, so what, line? Betsy? Betsy, I'll let you okay. kind of explain what you mean about that because not everyone uh, understands so, what you're saying. So there, <laughs> yeah, well, it shows it on the video, but they're in the middle of the song, and they have to do something. They're on that ships and dips cruise, and they have to like make a turn or something. So right in the middle of the song, like at the most critical moment, like the horn starts blaring on the ship. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like. like like ten wow. times. It's when they're actually leaving the dock. The port, yeah. And, oh, is it? oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the the, the um the dock leaving song. I can't think of the right words right the now. Way, but yeah, so they're, they're hit the horn to let them know that we're yeah. leaving, but like right in the middle of the song and. The look on the people's faces, the ca- the captain's faces, it looks like they did it deliberately. Like, okay, right. Ah, ah, ah. Well, I was gonna say, I, I wish it would have been really cool for them to like intentionally line it up. So like they strum the guitar and it makes this yeah. sound. Yeah. Or whatever. Out of his skin, poor guy. And honestly, like if you just put this, if, if you're listening along, if you're not listening to the vinyl version, which you have to flip over the record and then like, mm. this will be the first song. Like it comes right in the middle of, you know, what was the song that preceded this on the, on the testing album? one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. So like, it almost is its own ship horn, you know, like it, uh, because mm-hmm. it's so, you know, like, uh, it's like, like it's, like, oh, okay, I'm, you know, I'm paying attention again. Yeah. Like, yeah, because you, you kind of like after testing one, two, three is, which is kind of a more poppy tune, like you're, you're yeah. kind of, you've had a couple of poppy tunes in a row with, with, uh, shopping and then testing one, two, three. So like, this is a good way to wake up your brain and go, wait, what, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, let's talk about the interesting choice. They don't do this very often of completely exiting out all the music during the singing lines, during the voices, during the voices, <laughs> and then just this ominous bass drum pounding as he's singing. Or if I hold my tongue, I'll never lose my voice. With each attempted act of sabotage. 
sabotage destroys our home. And then, like, but there's the the accordion, right? Like in between, yes. like. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Hold on, let me go get my accordion. I'll try. I have one upstairs. I can't play it because it's too heavy. Well, it, it kind of feels like the the vocals start a line Ooh. and then the the instruments sort of finish it, um, which again might be programmatic uh, to you know to the song. Um, and I don't know, you know, I, I just like that that style of vocals where it's it's sort of doing these kind of runs. There's some there's some leaps, you know. I really like the leaps, and, and Stephen Page is very good at doing those. And it, there's this energy, there's this kinetic energy about it where it sounds, you can almost hear it like he's winding up something and then it's like unwinding, like it's climbing up. Da, 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 da. It's like winding up, then it's like releasing that energy. Da, 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 right. So it's just, I don't know, there's something really cool about that to me. Yeah, that's well said. I agree. The other thing that I found really interesting that I, I hadn't picked up on because I really wasn't attending to it before this point, um, but I'm going to do a screen share here in a second once my computer is is behaving and being nice to me, um, mm. is not only do we have um, the accordion, which is gentle kind of feel, like this... I don't know how to describe it. Um, but on the other end of that, we, we also have these really distorted guitars in the background that go with it. So if you listen, when it comes back in, you're going to hear the accordion, but you're going to also hear this really distorted guitar. It's really neat that they do that. And and if you can hear it really well because they have it split up where the accordion is completely in the left sure. ear and the distorted guitar is completely in the right ear. So if you just if you ever want to hear it without the accordion, you just take the your your speaker, <laughs> turn the speaker off, take out your your earphone and just listen. Like it is a very, very crunchy, distorted yeah. guitar, which is kind of a neat contrast very dry yeah. too there's no reverb on it so it's like very staccato and it just cuts off so it's got that again it's that very kinetic nervous energy about this song in general and i noticed uh in that instrumental track that like obviously you hear yeah. steve's vocal very clearly mm. and what i originally thought was like whoever stripped the vocals out just didn't do that great a job but like this was released by the band so no that's like him being recorded live on whatever on like the like Jim's the bass amp like or what yeah, bass the bass mic, mic or something or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh yeah. which I love because it might yeah, be a too. different version than the final vocal take, you know, like because it was gonna be hidden by whatever final vocal take they used of his, it might be, you know, like mm. That could be the scratch yeah, exactly. vocals, yeah. That's usually why we would do it. It's like record scratch vocals live with the band and then yeah. overdub. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's a good point. It's a nice little insight mm -hmm. into the recording process and, and to hear with it. Now, I would be remiss. We have amongst us tonight mm -hmm. noted music video director, Noah, <laughs> Noah, if you were going to make a music video for yeah. this song, do you have any ideas, anything come to mind? Um, I'm just curious. Honestly, it, it like the look of the the one week video almost matches this more for me. Mm. Like the early part before they do the like the General Lee and the like the 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 yeah. car running and the, you know like jump the yeah. hood slide and everything. Like when they're in the that weird fantasy you know wind up world, the ballroom uh, place. like yeah. that. Ooh, good point. Because it sounds very like uh, <laughs> Gogol Bordello or like, you know, sort of uh, nice performative, but like, uh, you know, um, European instrument type. It's not. It's, uh, you know, just all their normal stuff, but uh, something very cinematic with that, I think. Like, you know, him trying to. Is Steve trying to, I don't know, 
play his way out of trouble or something with somebody. I don't know. Just not in a in a, a Japanese wedding. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, where George Takei is very angry at them. No. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out, and it's really great with the instrumental that you pointed out last week, Noah, they had the instrumentals um, that had been released before this. They included it on the the um, extended disc. And one of the great things you can hear is some of the stuff that Kevin is doing um, during that. And he's got some really cool stuff that, that he's playing around with um, during this. And I'm going to play that for you guys that during the uh, second, after the second verse, uh, he's doing this really cool. Hold on. It's coming up. Oh, I forgot. Oh, my God. I can't believe I forgot to mention this because it's one of my favorite things. Heidi mentioned at the very beginning, why is there an E major in a C sharp minor scale? A major. A oh, okay. Major. A major. Well, but also also for the E major, uh, uh, we're in, oh, and an e we're major. in right. harmonic minor, which is the best minor, which is why it reminds me of klezmer music, a lot of the Eastern European folk music and stuff like which that. Which is part of that, yeah, the, the, that the scales definitely use oh, the yeah. most in that area. Which is, area. I, love, I just love, wow. it, again, it has these kind of interesting leaps uh, that you don't And for hear. those of you that don't know, a harmonic minor scale raises the sixth and seventh note of the scale it, it, from the minor it raises the sixth and seventh well technically that's just the easy explanation of it no i'm right <laughs> dogs they think i'm wrong They're chiming in the peanut gallery <laughs> like wait a minute what about harmonic minor you know that changes when it descends <laughs> 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 uh oh, oh, it's wait, it's looking like a melodica. Yeah, nice. The nerd flute. The nerd coming flute. Out. <laughs> I, so to demonstrate, I also love the melodica. I have one. Uh, I should go grab it. Who doesn't? <laughs> Best Christmas present ever. So instead of doing this, which would be, I'm just gonna play an A I, natural minor I used it on my first EP. I was like. <laughs> Instead, Dogs are going nuts. you would raise the sixth degree and the seventh, or sorry, the seventh degree only on the harmonic minor. Whoops. So you're only raising yeah, the seventh on the harmonic that, minor. Melodic yeah, raises sixth and seventh. It's a major seventh on a minor scale, yeah. and it sounds very interesting. So it has that really. Eeny, yeah. eeny, and the dogs are now setting. I always think of it as like the snake charmer yes. music. If you want to think in stereotypes, that's from a cartoon when you were a kid. If there was like a snake charmer, well, song, I wrote down this has in, a very harmonic mid eastern eastern feel to mm. the music. Yeah, and it's true. There is a lot of of music from that area as well as again Eastern Europe uh, that pulls from that. And I think it's just an amazing uh, scale. I just I love the harmonic minor scale. Well, and that surf guitar during the instrumental sounds very mm. much almost like an electric mandolin. Yeah, yeah, because it's got it's kind of maybe like a, a higher, crispier mm. timbre. I could hear that. <laughs> everyone gets after I say something, everyone's like, We get real quiet, we're, we're all deep in thought. <laughs> maybe we should, maybe we should shift to the mm. lyrical. Wait, well, I do want to bring up some more else. things that are that are musical oh, about please. this that are, I guess, kind of lyrical. Um. Ed is doing that very low harmony again in the background that we mm. discussed last week. He's doing that on this song again. And it was really weird because it goes against that really high munchkin sound too. Who's doing the high on that? He is. Yeah, That's I thought Ed was doing the munchkin yeah. sound, but maybe not. 
because I watched oh, him do the it. Oh, those Oz. The, yes. No, the the Blue. like on the uh, if the <laughs> genie I, I were set that. free part, like you can watch him on the. Oh, they released a uh, yeah. like an acoustic set on the DVD, and like uh, he's singing that like falsetto. It's it's higher than falsetto. It's like you know, crazy okay. Munchkin. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When yeah. I had written down like the Oz <laughs> during the Monk, bridge, yeah, Chipmunk, they album. put this weird filter on it. Like he's oh. he's doing the high Oz, but there's also this really weird eh, type of filter that's on it that you don't get in the acoustic version. The claw, yeah. It might be a slight phase phase or flange effect. Yeah, it could be. I think I know what you're talking mm-hmm. about. It almost so- sounds like the. Um... Aliens, the little alien toys yes. from oh, yeah. Toy Story, like the little the claw, like the uh, well, uh, when that happens, uh, like because uh, it yes. sounds like somebody yeah. like uh, you know, like doing that with their like throat. But there, you can hear on the instrumental track that like hmm. only in that yeah. part he plays like a very raw, like acoustic, good, like uh, you know, just in that like little transition section. Which also might mm-hmm. lend its mm. sonic, you know, values to the. Okay, maybe, yeah, because you don't get it in the acoustic version, but that also would be oh, gone see, yeah. in the acoustic version, so that makes sense. Or they hired Stevie Nicks and gave her some helium. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. That's exactly what they did. <laughs> Stevie, we know you listen. Come on the show. Yep, Tell us all about it. Uh, Come on the show. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll. I'm going to pull it up so that people (laughs) people know what we're talking about here. And it's easier for me to do it later on. (laughs) (laughs) There's definitely the lollipop guild chiming in there. (laughs) Very much. I can't listen to it. So yeah. I, I guess that's, that's a good lead into those are kind of lyrics in a way. I mean, they're they're vocal uh, uh, music. So why don't we talk a little bit about the song, about the the lyrics and meaning? Would anyone like to start? I'll start because I found out I realized recently I was wrong. So I I listened to this. <laughs> I, I got into the band. I've said this before that like around uh, high school, like sophomore, junior year, high school is when I really like got into all the albums and I was like going through a breakup and from it from being cheated on while listening to this uh, album so mm. I always thought this was a song about somebody especially based off of the first verse someone being cheated on and them trying to like keep them in the relate like I cheated on you but I'll stay like please stay I'll be different sort of a thing because like I'm not surprised it's kind of this sooner mm. later there must be another's kiss and then behind you know and then then you start to, you immediately start to extrapolate and go yeah I see where it falls apart but like Behind that kiss, a promise of a life of bliss. Yeah, great. I won't be taking the bait. Like, yeah, no, I know that you're not going to change. I'd like, I'd rather drown. I know you're not going to be better. So I always, so I, this was always like a breakup song to me, which always made sense with like the intensity of the music, because how I view it now, which I feel like is, seems to be more accurate or the consensus is about someone who like is stuck in complacency and doesn't want to is scared of change or doesn't think it's worth changing whatever very Mm. tongue-in-cheek as is normal steve but the music seems incredibly intense and fast for a tongue and tongue-in-cheek song about like i'd rather just stay like almost like it's it has the same sort of message to me as never do anything like i'm still gonna sit around and do f all with my life but that one is kind of lackadaisical and like whatever, and this feels really like intense and like done, 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 done. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like Aaron's yeah. having an epiphany right now. No, uh, just what you were just saying there, JD, just made me think so much of Dante, or <laughs> like he just has no ability to mm-hmm. make change yep. in his life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you're absolutely right. When I heard that first verse, I also thought it was more of a relationship thing. I thought it was he was being tempted. Oh yeah, cheat, no, that right? makes like yeah. that already makes a sense. better life yeah. if I go with you instead. But no, I'm not going to turn my life upside down. But then you realize, no, no. He just can't commit to anything. He can't commit to making a change right. or a choice. So he's just gonna coast by on whatever happens. Let the universe. But it, it's like it's like Dante, but also with the stubbornness. Of <laughs> like, yeah, 
he's yeah, like, like pointedly, you know, like uh, actively going yes. to not do it. Right, anything. right. Like, you know. <laughs> like decisions will be coming to you uh, that are very easy to make, yet you're actively deciding to not make those decisions. Like, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. He says, like, if he was granted three wishes, he'd bury them. Like, he won't <laughs> right. even make a wish. He doesn't want to change anything. I was walking down the street with two friends of mine a long time ago, and, like, they got into an argument, and they had each bought each other ice cream. And so, like... Be- and so one of them said, well, you bought this ice cream for me. So now I'm not going to eat it and threw it on the ground. And the other one did the same thing, not because they were angry, but because the other person had bought them the ice. So they like, you, you, you know, sure those aren't, the, those yeah. weren't, those no. weren't Tato. Like, <laughs> that sounds like something. <laughs> no, <laughs> they were, like, I my twins would do. Spiked <laughs> eating my ice cream and taking <laughs> the time and really savored it. If that was me, but I mean, no, it, it, they were like that's amazing. You know, 22 and it was all spite yeah. it's beautiful that's that is beautiful in its own way <laughs> but in it is he has a good point to a certain point though like it, with the wishes thing for example mm. like the, the it's the monkey's paw problem like i i could make these wishes but it could ruin my life in the pro- process of why these wishes. You get a team of lawyers to write out your wishes in their yeah. like 999 yeah. pages of stipulations <laughs> and provisos. You know, just make it airtight. Oh yeah, that reminds, <laughs> that reminds me from uh, watching Supernatural, like all the deals he made with the devil. Everything. I mean, he, the the point of like, hey, I'm not <laughs> going. Sure, the the idea of this affair is is really tantal, and you know, it's really interesting and really really tempting. But I'm not going to do that. Like to to that extent, he makes a really good point of like, I'm not going to throw right. away what I have now for what might be. But he also brings it back later on to the fact that, yeah, but I could also it could also ruin my life by not doing that with I'm not going to have fame. I'm not right. going to get I'm not taking chances with my life either. To quote another Canadian rock band, Rush, if you choose not to decide, yeah. you still have made a choice. Mm-hmm. Well, like if you think about <laughs> Steve has talked about how like seeing Brian Wilson play mm. Brian Wilson mm. uh he was very much like didn't know if he wanted to stand up on his seat <laughs> and say I wrote this song or hide <laughs> under his seat you know <laughs> like it so I I think he just has this attitude you know about every like uh, he seems like know. an overthinker well I was gonna say the the level of anxiety in this yeah. song yeah and I, I think, think that goes back to what you were saying JD yeah. With... Well, there's a freneticism to it too. Yeah. It's kind of frenetic. Well, that's the thing, is like the intensity of the song goes with that anxiety of, that seems to be behind this person. It's not so much that he's like, I'm not gonna commit. It's like I am so incredibly scared that's of true. what that's, could go yeah. wrong and what might happen badly that I can't. I don't th- I don't yeah, dare that's, to that's a good point. As somebody yeah. with anxiety, I can concur that this is the thought process. Yeah. No, and that God, that reminds me of. Oh shoot! I don't think it was a BNL song, but there was some song yeah. uh, that like, I was listening to the past fun. few months that it was a song where I'm like, "This is no was it your own song." <laughs> oh yeah, that you I were forgot. Writing? No, thanks for the plug. <laughs> no, it was some. It was some song where I was. Where I was like, you know, this is not a, a pleasant song to listen to, mm-hmm. but it, it, it it's such a like good example of what it feels like in your head with anxiety and depression, and so like in I, your head. Mm. Yeah, that's what it was. It was a Thank you so much. No, yeah, it was. But like, I, that's a good point that this does have that. I think freneticism is a great word for it, where it's just like you're welcome. How it, can, it feels like your heart's beating really fast, and you're like, you're so both decisions are in front of you. You don't know what to do. Whereas, like, I think I was reading the lyrics as more just like l- more like never do anything. Of just like, eh, whatever. Like, I'd rather not make the decisions as opposed to I'm so petrified. I don't know how to make the or. I'm going to turn away from it all. Well, it's that, like that, that yeah, it's like that phrase, the devil, you know. Yes, you know yes, that. exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. It's exactly. like the intersection of ADHD and anxiety. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man, I got a kiosk on that intersection. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I shop there, dude. Like, uh, I sell, I sell unfinished kiosk. hobby projects. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Can we talk about the fact that the one line, this has got, this song is so packed with amazing one liner lyrics. Mm. Yes. Yes. It's mm-hmm. just packed with them. Absolutely. There's not a bad lyric oh, yeah. in here, I don't think. Like, I just... Can anybody explain the Andy Warhol ghost? Yeah, the 15 minutes of, of fame. 15, Andy yeah, Warhol everyone... once said, everybody will be famous for 15 minutes. Okay, so it's just about Andy Warhol. It's not about something specifically about Andy Warhol's ghost. Unless, I mean, it's possible that we <laughs> okay. missed something. Uh, no, Steve, I... please come on the show. <laughs> okay. I think it's out. just that he said everybody will be for <laughs> Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, I knew that part, but like, <laughs> I think it was more like tell Andy Warhol. He's like, oh, what he's dead. Okay, tell his ghost. Right. <laughs> sure, yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. No, I get that now. Yeah, that makes sense. You were saying you a line uh, though. Heidi. I was, I was thinking. Oh gosh, I just, I like so many of them, but I think the one I really like the most is uh, where is it? Um, Oh, it's this one. Um, I made my mind up and I'll never be the kind of man who'd make a choice for if I hold yeah. my tongue, I'll never, never lose my voice. voice. It, yeah, mm-hmm. I just, I don't know why. I, if I hold my tongue, I'll never lose my voice. I love that. But it's kind of like what, and, what and Hamilton live. says to Aaron Burr in Hamilton. If you stand for nothing, Burr, what do you fall for? <laughs> yeah. So, Tracy, what were you going to say, though? Because I think it was exactly what I was just going to say. Well, whenever he does it live, he does it. Di- he yeah. does that line differently. Um, I was actually just going to pull that up um, because it's always he always does it the same. Well, not exactly the same way. He does it slightly different, but he goes into this operatic. Yeah, he seems voice. very like yeah, which is like I'm I think so up. often they like Steve especially like. You know, he writes these songs and they're very analytical or very like, you know, methodical and he thinks about them a lot. And then when they sing them, they just yeah. throw the meaning completely out the Good window point. sometimes. Yep. You know. It becomes so much of a just mm-hmm. a performance opportunity for And them. his vocal like his vocals on this song are so good too though. Like uh, when I fall is such a sweet song. But when Ed sings it, he often says, like, I can't be- I can't look below me. <laughs> he, he just say blow me. You know, like it. <laughs> right. It, it's like, yeah, yeah, why why are you, you know, like pooping it takes in your mouth? Yeah. 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 So this is that change that he does. Yeah. So he does he, like he, uh, be, you know, with the band, he would often go like further with it. Like, you know, th- that is like almost sounds like an in-store version of like what yeah. he, you know, his typical sing it out was. <laughs> my, my favorite line is if each attempted act of sabotage destroys all hope, I won't be needing the rope. And then he follows it up with, I'm gagged and bound. So not only is he preventing himself from losing everything, but he's holding himself back from from succeeding as well. He's tied himself up. It's, I love that And line. he won't be needing the rope, but he is also <laughs> gagged and bound. So like, even in there, like, it's the, he can't make up his mind. Like, I won't be needing the rope. Hey! Like, you know, Sorry. I'm gagged and bound, especially, you know, assumedly with a rope. Like, Right. I won't I won't need that rope that you're giving me the extra length on because I'm already I've already yeah. taken care of that. I've done this right. to myself. There you go. Um there's also a really cool rhyme scheme in this song. So the rhyme scheme within the verses is A A and then The next two rhymes are internal rhymes to the line, B, B, then same thing on the next line, C, C, and then he goes back to the uh, rhyme between two lines, D, D, and he does that with all the verses. It's really like a very complex rhyme scheme. But it works. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It pushes the song along a lot faster. Mm-hmm. 
it's one of those it's it's weird because like every aspect that we've talked about of the song is just really unique in its own like in its own kind of category like the key itself the instrumentation of it the way it's structured the lyric uh, the lyrics are pretty when i say classic i mean just clever and a lot of one-liners and like good and then the rhyme scheme scheme of lyrics yet it all comes together really really well like you don't i i don't listen to this and go this doesn't really work like it's, it doesn't it comes together in a really perfect puzzle and like is to me at least is very easily single material and like we said earlier should have had a video of some sort or something like it all just it pulls together really powerfully so it's just interesting that you can it's it speaks to their you know, I, I we've talked about this a lot. At least Nick and I have. May he rest. Um, with a lot of their newer stuff, like as much as I love, especially the past two three albums, like their skills as musicians do not get to shine as much anymore. Mm-hmm. Like you don't really get to hear this sort of stuff from Jim and his buddies of like how how uh, varied their skill set is and the instruments that they play. So when you get to, when you kind of lean back on that and listen to that here and stuff it's just really fun because you you're reminded of like yeah these guys have like their shows are some of the most fun concerts you ever go to and their albums are still a lot of fun but they're also really really skilled musicians Mm. like kev is amazing at so many instruments jim is amazing at so many instruments and it's fun to kind of hear that again i think also uh, to that point almost now when i listen to their newer stuff it sounds like so much of it is Ed just like rehashing, like yeah. everything is great. <laughs> you know, like right. we're awesome. We're, yeah. we're, life yeah. is like good. Topium. You know, like whereas before you had the the peanut butter <laughs> to yeah. go with the jelly. Yeah. Nicely like, put. You know, Nicely put. Like, I like yeah. that. And, you know, you can only eat, enjoy a jelly sandwich <laughs> for so long. Uh, but like, and I've said that about you know, uh, the pairing of them for years. Steven's a little more salty, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Have um, you been listening to Snack and... Time again? <laughs> <laughs> now I want some popcorn. I'm a mommy. <laughs> I'm, <salty. laughs> I'm bland. Sorry, please finish your thought, Noah. <laughs> no, I, I think that, like, it... This is a good, like, you know... Uh, I don't, I don't know that I had an end to my thought. <laughs> Honestly, it was just like, uh, it, it, I agree with the, I agree. <laughs> um, uh, that in back when this album was made, there was a lot more mm-hmm. dichotomy between the, this was you know, Pianella, the height of their power, happy and all of the other emotions that it's like Roger are, Waters you know. and David Gilmour, you know, it's like Lennon and McCartney. They had, they had the yin and the yang and they completed each other. I think it was just, uh, yeah, there was, I have a radical theory I would like to propose. Do you all suppose that this is Stephen Page's Salisbury Hill? And I'll, I'll tell you why I'm thinking that because I know I, and I'm getting better at this, at placing the dates of the albums and stuff. Uh, finally, uh, Tracy's still going to always beat me at BNL trivia, but if I'm not mistaken, uh, everything to everyone was 2003. And there was a weird period there of a few years where it was all like the Christmas album and the Hanukkah album and as you like it. Yeah. And it was obviously uh, Stephen kind of saying like, I want to go off and do different things and do my own thing. So I'm wondering if this is his like, you'll have to uh, Yoko me out, but shit or get off the pot. So <laughs> uh, as far as like being like, should I just go off and do my own thing and, and, and be a solo act? I, I wonder if he was kind of struggling with that question. And I wonder if this was I maybe part of him trying to process that. I, I don't know if I have a perfect answer to that. I think I have a roundabout answer, which would be that I think there are songs on this album. I'm trying to be careful to make sure that they're, some of them are ones that you that I don't want to say ones that you have not gotten to yet, so you can or cannot guess that ring that are musically very similar to things he will have done as a solo artist later. Mm. So I think he's he's exploring okay. a lot of that territory that maybe he wanted to move into. Um, I mean, I think this is the last song alphabetically. No, it's not. That- 
yeah, yeah. Never mind. And that's no, and, I, yeah, I yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's on... that's one that I'm thinking of. Uh, but I think like celebrity could be one too. Like I feel like songs like celebrity, you know, you've got the tango y sort of feel here, and you've got entourage mm. on page one. Uh, but I, I think the the big question would be like how intentional was that? How how much was that a a like like you said a, a crapper get off the pot thing versus I kind of want to try this and the band being like like into it at that point and then the next four or five years being like no we want to kind of keep going in this way but I definitely feel what right. you're saying well, about the they yeah did. like the band definitely went more yes. in the pop direction Steve definitely went more in this like I'm gonna experiment yes. with a whole well, bunch of stuff Vanity direction. Project came out <laughs> in a five experiment so, so that, like. like <laughs> I was not going there, Noah. <laughs> That's, I'm going to experiment with a whole lot of stuff. No, no, yeah. no don't do that. The Vanity Project, yeah. which I love, but... came out in 05. So you might be onto something, JD, because that came out not too long after after this album. But can we just? Well, and I want to build on that, Heidi, because this is the first album where the band decided there will be no no working with other people outside of the band right. to write songs. Uh, the Paige yeah. Duffy era. I, almost, I don't know if end. that was a agreed upon decision, um, because then two years later, Stephen did Vanity Project with with mm -hmm. Stephen Duffy. Um, so again, I get the feeling that the band was trying to pull Steven in and rein Steven in in some ways. For like a, uh, we don't want to share the rights with other <laughs> like people anymore. I think that they just saw that he was collaborating a lot with Steven Duffy and they were like, Is yeah, but he's been doing that him since out of the like, band. He had been doing that since right. 94, you know, yeah. so like. That, that's the, you know, it, know. Th this is obviously not the topic of this specific episode or <laughs> most of them, but that I think that's what's. What? <laughs> what? We don't do that like, here, Jane. You know, there are, we don't do that. I, 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 no, I think it's one, of, it's one of those weird things where like, it, like any creative partnership, whether it's a band or writers or directors, like actors, will we never know what it actually is like inside because like for all we know, they could have they could have had no problem with Stephen Duffy. They could have just gone, hey, you know what? Maybe let's just like keep it in, in house. Or it could have been like close to breaking point, like blow up about like we got it. Like it's when we think when I think of Ed and Steve, I think of them as like just like peanut butter and jelly. They go so well together. They write so well together. They work so well together. And then something happens. Well, a lot of things happen and then they split up. But like you mm -hmm. in all actuality there have been cracks since probably 94 like yeah. in some way shape or form and then like mm -hmm. you see yeah. the juno awards reunion and they're like they're so good all up on stage together that at least at that point in my life i'm like grown up to go they're professionals like it's not that they did, don't like each other at this point necessarily, but they're adults. No. They know how to get up on stage, perform a great time together, and then part ways afterwards. And it's just, it's just, I don't know. Like, I, I, this is what I spend the most of my free time doing is speculating on things like this, and then it always ends up going like, but you don't know. So mm -hmm. like, it just ends in the same. I spot. really don't mm -hmm. know. <laughs> uh -huh. And when it comes down to it, they're like, they're like brothers, yeah. but brothers who spend a lot of time together it they oh yeah each other's nerves they're more like the I, that's what brothers. i was just gonna say yeah <laughs> yeah yep. i was like from from shameless what or possibly there might just be like the gallagher brothers <laughs> like gallagher, oh, gallagher yeah, wow. too. <laughs> that's a whole other is movie. it weird yeah, to anybody thing. else though that this album is 20 years old i was on uh oh no song, like songmeetings.com or like looking at some of the comments and there's like comments 17 years ago and i was like holy moly that is i wild. i really didn't think about that i don't think of that album as being that no, old no which means that i'm somebody, really old and i still don't know who it was somebody in my life possibly more than one person after this album came out spent several months sending me anonymous postcards <laughs> with <some kind> of <laughs> like 
That's I love it. And I don't I still don't know who it was. Nobody's ever you know, <laughs> admitted to. <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to get them. <laughs> they, they didn't. They just, you know, like found pictures of chimpanzees and cut them out and then they pasted a, a oh, postcard. Wow. Just, you know, dedication. Yep. <laughs> well, I would like to get us to put some numbers down. So I'm going to say how many negatives, as in like photographic <laughs> negatives. Like night photograph negatives? <laughs> well, sort of. I was thinking like that that negatives are like the upside down. Oh, okay. I, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Wait, one is a flower. But a two is a <laughs> drunken drunk naked girl. Drunken naked, naked girl. girl. Or they change it. Sometimes they say that's a bare right. naked lady, a big naked boy yeah. and girl. Can I propose another um, young? Actually, no. Why don't we go with uh, what, who's the oh uh, what's his name the bad the big bad in in Stranger Things oh gosh. Uh, B oh Vecna Vecna oh Vecna Vecna thank you the eighties how many Vecna. Vecnas do you get this song since it's upside down uh... <laughs> um I will have I'm gonna have Betsy go first mm. this week. How many Vecnas do you give this song, what the Betsy? Fuck is Vecna? Um, <laughs> what the duck is a Vecna? Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna go with three point seven five. Ooh, three point seven five. Why the hate? Out of ten <laughs> or out of five? <laughs> out of five. Out of five. Zero okay. to five is our ranking system. All right, Betsy, you really don't like this song that much. I like it. I just don't play it all the time. Ah. Uh. Okay, uh, Heidi, how about oh, you? This is a good one for me because I love the jam of it. Um, and, 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 I love the chunkiness. I love every line, and it's it's right up there for me. It's a five for me. It's a five Vecnas with an Eddie Munson thrown oh, in for awesomeness. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, my tables. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. All right, Aaron, how many how many Vecnas slash Eddies do you give this song? This is a tough one. Um, I'm very tempted to give it a five as well. It's Ooh. it's very, very good. It is it's, it's Why stuck in my say head. No, when it feels so good. To say <laughs> yes. Well, there's one song. Oh, you know what it is? There's one song that's been hanging me up and probably stopping me from from giving more fives because I always think, well, is it better than that? A long time ago now in a galaxy far away, I gave Colin Answer a 4.5 and <gasps> I'm officially revising Colin Answer to a five because it's oh, awesome. Thank God. And God. that will allow me to also rate Upside Down five Vecnas out of five because I... All really... righty, Aaron. Woohoo! High five. <laughs> Music nerds unite! But, wow. but <laughs> only like only Jim's harmony part from Colin Answer, right? Like the, that that rates like an eight out of five. It's a great uh, song. And so is this. So what did? Sorry, what did you give this one? I was right. I was fixing five your other Vecna out of five. Giving it the the Eddie Munson special. Ooh, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Noah, how about you? Uh, five, six, eight. Like, this is my favorite song from Look the Look at us cleaning house. <laughs> yeah. All right, JD, what I, about I you? I love this song. I, I feel like I have to give it a little lower than a five because the past, I think the past two times I was on, I gave out fives and they were my first fives to, um, testing one, two, three and, uh, things. So I, I think I'm going to give this one. I think I'll give it a a, a four four point two five, and only because when I really think about it, I don't go back to it as much as I think I do. But I love this song. I can't I can't tell you a negative thing about it. But there are probably twenty songs I'd go back to before it. But uh, it's it's near flawless. So four four and a quarter. Okay. All right. And sort of like you jd like i was tempted this week to give this a five 
But then I'm like, I know a song that's coming up very in the very oh, near future. Um, that that definitely is a five. Um, and I just saw my my five vanish yeah. off the screen. Um, and so I'm gonna have to give it a four point eight four. Which is it, it's a step above what last week's song was, but it's it's right up there. That's a yeah. It's it's oddly specific, but I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I mean, when you hit two hundred and eighty two songs, <laughs> you got yeah, to you got to find some space fair. in between yeah. the decimal points. <laughs> yeah, I can't argue with that. Um, some important things that did happen this week. Noah, do you want to tell us about the important things that happened this week? You were you were telling, and I deleted it out of last week's episode. Uh, wait, did I know something important that happened this week? Um, that, yes. Like, when so it... on July 14th, 1991, Stephen and Ed went to the Palladium in New York oh. City. Oh. And they met Sean Lennon. Oh yeah, and uh, they gave him a tape of Yoko Ono, of Be My Yoko Ono, and he gave it to his mom. And, and they invited <laughs> him to come to the show the next night. And that's he did. right. And she heard the song, and when asked about it in an interview, somebody said, "Have you heard the Bare Naked Ladies song, Be My Yoko Ono?" And she said, "I have." And they said do you did you like it and she said yeah yeah but they have some other songs and they're pretty good too <laughs> and then she gave bare naked ladies a bunch of home movie footage for that cool. video of <laughs> super cool. Ono. that is awesome mm-hmm. and one of the songs that she said that she really liked was if i had a million dollars was it yeah well you know yoko no likes Campfire songs, I guess. <laughs> and or Dijon ketchups. <laughs> and uh yeah. You never know what, what Yoko Ono's gonna like. True. Maybe she likes tastefully <laughs> rounded necks. <laughs> well, that's it, guys. We are done with the wow. Use. Just oh. just like that, I Whoa. can't even see them anymore. It's almost like they're oh, vanishing. Oh, I see what you did there. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of hats to happen. Because, yes, yeah. that's next week's song. This uh, dog almost looks like a rabbit coming out of my <laughs> top hat. Um, <laughs> so cute I, I want to hand it over for a moment and let JD do some plugs because... Uh. I mean, you can hear JD Wait, on Bare Naked Ladies are us. I've got His a whole looks bag so of natural. them. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, thank you. They're, they've done such a they've come such a long way nowadays. <laughs> They're really great. Long, long JD's got a surge protector <laughs> in back of him. That's how many plugs he's got. No, I yeah, we did we did an episode. Our, ours is structured a little less um, uh, consistent than you guys right now. You heard Nick and I get in an argument about that on our most recent episode where. I've been waiting on a playlist from him for like three months now to finish off our most recent band. And then I said, should we just cut our losses? And he said, absolutely not. Cause we have one fan who specifically asked for a certain song. And I said, well then buddy, you got to get me a playlist. So there's technically an episode coming out for radical face before we finish that band up. Um, now, is that going to be a missing film or I don't know what you're saying. I have no clue. <laughs> he's I, he's, oh. I think it's going to, are those like B sides or do you, or, EPs. Those are are two different albums that you guys haven't covered yet, or at least they're they might be. Yeah. Like oh yeah, he's gonna the, the soundtracks type type stuff. He said he's gonna like cover briefly and like discuss, but I don't think we're gonna go track by track because it's more instrumental. Uh, I think we're basically gonna do kind of like a B side and then EP collect or like unreleased track collection album or episode, just because there's so many of those that it could be like thirty to forty tracks, or it could be like here's one or two episodes like that. So. Um, and Radical Face just has a smaller fan base that they're not as thorough as like a BNL fan base. So, so like to spend a lot of time on it wouldn't be as fruitful. Um, so he's like, he's like, there are like 12 or 13 that we have to cover. And then a few more that he wants to do because he loves them a lot. So I wanted to hear from him. I just, I, I'm, we have ideas for where we want to go next and I'm really excited to go there, but I also want to make sure that we like 
give this the respect it deserves because it has been very, we've argued a lot more this time around than we ever had before. And that's been a blast. Um, but that, the only other plug is that I had my set, my new single came out uh, a couple of weeks ago, a month, month ago now uh, called bury the gold uh, from it's, uh, it's released under King Inc. is my, my, my act. Uh, but Barry the Gold's first single came out. Uh, the EP should be out, I think, the first week of September. I think it just decided on the release date um, last week. And um, I really like this stuff a lot more than I thought I would. So it's very fun. Um, I, I mean, it's hard to say if it's BNL inspired, but it, I mean, it, at least it, it, like I take a lot from them, especially lyrically. But I don't think musically you could you could hear it there. But um, but check it out, Barry the Gold. It's, I'm very happy with it, and it's it's fun. So thank you, Tracy. <laughs> I'm done talking now. You're welcome. I love Thank, the first yeah, album, I, I really, I, so. You know, I think it's the same thing any any artist has with like music where it's like the first time it's like, hey, I'm recording for the first time. And you're just kind of throwing all the thoughts out there. And now this time you're kind of like, oh, hey, let's actually put some like a little more structure and thought behind everything to make it a little more cohesive thematically. So um, so I think that's why I'm a little bit more excited. But I, I still like a, I still feel very proud of the first one. But this one, I'm just like itching to like get it all done and get it out there and stuff. So. It's fun. No more self promo. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and Noah, do you have any things that you would like to plug? Um, well, uh, they're mostly local, but I have some things yeah. on the internet. Uh, if you uh, want to see uh, my artwork, uh, you can, uh, it's on Instagram uh, at art by Noah Gen X. Or uh, my puppets are on. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, oh, that's the. Uh, I love you, you can that, always see I... Noah's artwork on our our <laughs> BNL page. I love from... seeing your your daily drawings of like the Bob's Burger and like I huh. I'm that... such I, I love Bob's Burgers and I love what you're doing with the Sesame Street and Bob's Burgers characters and I just love your daily drawing so much. There's a uh, because of that um, one of the uh, like a person from the Bob's Burgers fan community reached out to me uh, who goes by Linda Belcher who is my on spirit uh, animal. Instagram and and uh, asked me to co-host a, a month long uh, Bob's Burgers mashup. Uh, oh, I love uh, challenge. it. So that'll that'll be in August. So in August, I'll be doing like a uh, Bob's Burgers mashup uh, oh, one I, every that's day. So cool. And that's I on, love Bob's Burgers. That's I, on Instagram. I sing Linda songs all the time. <laughs> yes, the cranberry sauce. We're having mashed potatoes. Gee, the turkey looks great. John Roberts makes most of those songs up in the in the <laughs> booth, like when like they just put them in the booth and let it. them go. Um, and then my, uh, puppets are also on Instagram. Uh, uh, I think it's at Noah puppet co. Um, so you can see that stuff there or just Google me and I'll pop up. Like, um, I have a very, you know, distinct spelling to my name. And so you'll find me everywhere <laughs> on the internet. G I N E X. Correct. Yes. <laughs> in case people were wondering how to spell it. Yes. It's like the uh, liquor and the letter of the alphabet. <laughs> Are you? And we still have to figure a way to, to add Betsy into the background here. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. totally. She she is a staple of the show. She was she's actually been on longer than Jeff at this point. Yeah. So Jeff, did you do Ballad of Gordon as a as a like when you were in the bees or? Oh yes. Just, yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> oh yes. There there's. There's no song that we haven't nope. covered yet. Oh, good. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. But now we're vanishing. Sorry, so. my dog is... oh. Yes, <laughs> everyone's attention span is slowly vanishing at this point. So I will say good night to everyone. And thank good you guys night, for everybody. joining us for the wonderful conversation. Thanks. Thanks, that was fun. Don't forget, no regrets. Except maybe. 
celebrate joining Pantheon Podcasts, Rock Camp, the podcast, the official podcast of Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, is giving away a guitar signed by Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater, Marty Friedman, formerly of Megadeth, and legendary shredder Zach Wilde, plus our rock star counselors like Vinny Apice, Monty Pittman, and more. To enter to win, simply follow, rate, and review our podcast on your preferred platform, and that's all you have to do. For more information, go to rockcamp.com forward slash podcast.